I've been thinking about all the shaking that's going on in the world. Shaking with riots and looting and everything, everything. Everything going down all at once. I just want to remind the body of Christ that our Lord is coming and we are going to meet Him in the air at any time. But with all this shaking going on, it made me, for whatever reason, think of a salt shaker. It made me think of Matthew 5, 13. It says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. I don't know if you've ever been like me, but... Have any of you ever tried to eat a fried egg without any salt? There was a time when I had this powerful hunger and I had a, a powerful taste for some fried eggs. I made some bacon and toast and, and uh, everything that could go with it. And uh, when it came to salt the eggs, I grabbed the salt shaker only to find that it had run out of salt. I didn't even have any salt in the, in the pantry. I went ahead and ate the eggs, but they were so tasteless they weren't any good. In this verse of scripture, Jesus is saying that we as Christians are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Have you ever thought much about what salt does? For one thing, it flavors. Uh, salt has even been used to preserve that you used to preserve meat. Another thing salt does is make you thirsty. Anybody ever been thirsty? Oh, I know I have, especially from eating too much salt. I remember years ago growing up in church, I'd, I'd look at some of the people and it almost looked like they were a glow. I said, man, what is it about them? Uh, I have to think back and think, you know, I would have to say, that it was God's salt in them making me thirsty to have what they had. Uh, I just want everybody to know that when a salt shaker is full, it is then ready for use. You are full of the salt of God's Word. Amen? God wants us to fill up with the salt of God's Word and go out and be a salt shaker for the world. He the Most High wants us to be so full, of, so full of Him that the people around us will develop a thirst and want what we have. In Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6 it says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. And back in Matthew 5.13 it goes on to say, But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? I don't know if you've ever thought too much about it, but I know most of you had to cook something, you know, pot a uh, pot on the stove with, with some water and you've added salt and, and you've added your whatever else you were cooking and you stir it around and, and you do the taste test and it just seemed just right but then you thought it might need a little more water and of course you'd add a little more water and then you might have to add a little more salt you might have to add a little more salt um, because the salt has become diluted it has become diluted uh, but in our Christian walk one way that we can dilute God's salt in us is by going back to the way we used to live, by mixing ourselves with the ways we used to live. Folks, Jesus is telling his disciples here, hey, don't lose your fellowship with God. The Lord is saying, hey, don't lose your saltiness, amen? Uh, I remember uh, years ago, my old pastor was getting ready to ordain about three or four of us and I uh, remember him saying well I see no reason not to ordain them but then he said but maybe I should ask their wives about them first 
after that he started laughing, you know, he was joking, but it was a relief for me and about three or four others, you know, because I mean, he knows that <laughs> your wife or husband knows you better than you think they do, they man. They know everything about you. About like the Most High, the Most High knows everything about us and he still loves us. Amen. But, uh, of course, we went on and got ordained by the grace of God. Amen. We were so thankful. I just want to encourage everyone uh, to maintain your saltiness. And, of course, when I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself more than anybody. We have nothing to lose but everything to gain. I would like to say one more thing about salt. As we all know, the highway crews use a salt mixture to clear the snowy and icy roads. The salt literally melts the snow and ice covered highways. What the salt does is clear the way. That's what the Lord wants you and I to do. He wants us to clear the way for the world so that they can find their way to the cross. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you and I may be the only gospel these people ever see. How about in these uncertain days, we'd be the ones that point someone to Jesus, point someone to everlasting life. Jesus is getting ready to rapture the bride of Christ out of here. We're getting ready to go home, be with the Lord forever and forever and forever. We're, we're getting ready to go where the evers never run out, amen? Forever and ever. And, and sometimes my heart gets sad thinking about those that are going to be left behind. Uh, we, we've been praying. I pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day for the lost. Oh, God help us. But in the meantime, let's be a beacon of light. Let's, let's be the salt of the world. Let's tell somebody about Jesus. Make them thirsty for the things of God. Amen. Let your conversation be seasoned with grace and seasoned with the salt of God's Word because our Lord is coming. Brothers and sisters, we need to be sounding the alarm. We need to sound the alarm. We need to uh, tell someone that Jesus is coming. We need to be blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. You know, that's the verse I have showing here for Job 2.1. We need to we need to be a voice crying in the wilderness, pointing the way. When you prayed, you just kept praying, especially for your loved ones. Just uh, know that God hears your prayer. The things I've done in times past to say, well, Lord, I've, I've prayed and I've prayed. I just pray now that you'll send laborers to cross their path, you know, that maybe they can reach out and touch them. But I just want to remind you that God has the master's plan for your life, and what he has planned for your life also involves the lives of those that you hold dear to your heart. God has the plan. In the meantime, tell somebody about Jesus. Do the Today is not the day to lose your salt in this thing, man. Today is not the day to lay down and say, well, why go on a little further? The Lord's going to catch us up any moment. No, you tread and you keep on treading. You you press and you keep on pressing. So many so many of us have called out for God's anointing, but we don't want the, 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 the crushing that produces oil, amen? Just keep on pressing on. Jesus is about to come and get us and, and your loved ones, God knows them by name. He has a plan. Together we're going to stay strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And I tell you, we will be meeting in the clouds at any time. Until that day arrives, we love you, God bless you, and Maranatha.